Okay, as the last example in our in our two uh, our two lessons on Carnot maps, we're going to talk about a real world design problem. And in this case, we've got a, a design problem that looks like the one from the from the lesson, but with some important differences. Here, we're going to have a, a four bit counter that's going to count the numbers six through fifteen. So, just as a, as a note here, this number is equal to six, and this number is equal to 15. And, and um, if those aren't fresh in your memory, uh, that's okay. Uh, we just need to be able to remember what they are. And we're going to skip 0 through 5. Right away I can spot that means that those are going to be don't care cells in the K-map. Design an optimal sum of products, logic, circuit, to light, and LED for the numbers 7 through 10. So 7 through 10, that's going to be the, the places where there are 1s in the K-map. And then, of course, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15, those will be zeros in the K-map, because those are valid inputs for which we do not want to light the LED. So we can, we can go ahead and draw the k or let's go ahead and write the min-term expression. So I know that f, and there are four variables, a, b, c, d, is equal to the min-terms, and I need to include 7, 8, 9 and 10 plus the don't cares of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So that's all the work that it takes to, to write out what the midterm expression is going to look like. Uh, we can then take that and put it into a Carnot map. We need the four variable Carnot map. So it'll be the big square one. You could time yourself and see if you can do this faster than I can. You probably can. Oh, oh, I made a mistake. Don't get careless. Okay, so there's the key map ready to receive the numbers. 7, 8, 9, and 10, those are going to be the ones. So here's a 1. 8, 9, and 10. Those are pretty spread out. I hope that the don't, don't cares make things better. Uh, 0, so this uh, 0 gets an x, 1 gets an x, 2 gets an x, 3 gets an x, 4 gets an x, and 5 gets an x. Okay, so I'm gonna, uh, and then everything else that didn't get mentioned gets a 0. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and take uh, cells 8 and 9, and I'm going to wrap around with cells 0 and 1. I'm going to go ahead and grab, uh, just to cover cell 7, I'm going to take 1, 3, 5, and 7, which we need the largest and the fewest groups possible. The larger the group, the better. We can't take the whole left-hand side because cell 6 contains a 0, but I can take 4 cells. Then I'm left with only cell 10 that needs to be that needs to be covered, and really you can't go up or to the left. You can go to the right and you can go down, so actually it's the four corners. The four corners is, by the way, uh, the professor's favorite group because it's the one that students are most likely to forget. Okay, so let's take then F of A, B, C, and D. This is going to be equal to, let's take um, cells 0, 1, 8, and 9. I can see that they all have B bar in common, and they also all have C bar in common. Then let's take uh, cells 1, 3, 5, and 7. Well, they all have A bar in common, and then they also all have D in common. And then let's take the four corners. They all have B bar in common, and then they also have D bar in common. So I can see here that uh, I've got uh, uh, three terms. I'm going to need to have three AND gates. And those are going to feed into an OR gate. That'll generate F. Um, let's see, I'm going to need D and D bar. B bar is going to be used for two of them. So I'm going to take, uh, let's take this one, BC. I'll invert it. I'll go into here. I'll take this one to be B. I'll invert it. And that gives me not B and not C. But then let's go ahead and take not B and put it there. So not B and not D. So I'm going to take the inverter here. There's not D. Then the next one is going to need a copy of uninverted D. And then it's also going to need a copy of inverted A. 
So that is the uh, that is the circuit that can be used to implement. Now, obviously, you can see I've got these these uh, A A B C and D are not in the same order as they were up here. But notice that that we do in fact have uh, we do in fact have the same topography. We have four inputs A B C and D, and then we have a single output which we've labeled as F. And so it is this circuit right here that literally goes inside that box, forming the decoder that will ensure that we light the light on, on uh, outputs 7 through 10, but that we don't care about 0 through 5 because those input combinations will absolutely never happen.